Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 163 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a 2-5 session at the one Eye Jacks at Sarasota, Florida. Before I get into some hands, I stream on Club GG every Monday at approximately 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Have one interesting hand to go over them. They're letters, and letters are pretty good. This guy's weird. He might just lead. Yeah, why not? Over Bet River. He has bluffs. I have to call. He has bluffs. I told you he has bluffs. Ah! Call an over bet with just a pair. So if you're interested in catching punts like this online with me, message me on Instagram or Telegram and we can just set up for that. Otherwise, let's roll the tape. First hand of note. With a button limp, I'm in the small blind with 7-6 clubs. I raised to $20. The button is the only color, so we end up going heads up to a flop of king-7-5 with two diamonds. Flopping middle pair, some straight draw potential. We're not going to check this one. We have all the best kings in range, so we're going to throw out a almost pot size bet of $35 to this bet. My opponent decides to make the call. Not too happy about that, but the four of spades on the turn really just forces me into two barrel territory. Picking up equity, we're not going to slow down. Second barrel might get nines, tens, maybe the weakest kings in range to fold. And my opponent might be peeling with like an ace X of diamonds that might give up facing two barrels. So I continue for $80, considering to empty the clip, whether I make it or miss, but it will not come to that. My opponent folds, and we end up winning the first hand of the day. Following that, I'm on the button. I look down at King Jack of Diamonds. The cutoff limps, I raise to $25, and the small blind decides to 3-bet to 90. King Jack is not really a hand you want to defend 3-bets with. It has a lot of reverse implied odds of a flop is king high or jack high. You're never really going to know if you have the best top pair. But either way, with position and the suited variety of this hand, I decide to go ahead and make the call anyway for $90. Everyone else folds, and we end up going heads up to a flop of king 5-5 five five with one diamond. My opponent down bets to $50. I suppose he would do this with ace-king, ace-queen, queens, jacks, tens, and pocket kings. Some of those hands I am firmly ahead of, some of those hands I am losing to, but we're going to find out which category of hands we're against right now when I decide to raise to $160. Yes, it is a new Kyle. It is aggression central. To the $160 bet, my opponent decides to make the call. Not a great development. He could have ace-king. He could have king-queen. He could just be not giving up with some pocket pairs, but seeing as I'm a raised caller, I have all the fives in range. And my opponent doesn't have too many besides ace-five exactly. Either way, the turn is the deuce of diamonds. And similarly to the last hand, this means it is go time. We have picked up equity. If my opponent has ace-king, we can bet big here, jam river if we hit a flush, if we hit a jack, if we hit a scare card. Either way, we're not slowing down here. I'd do this if I had four, five, five, six, ace, five, and I guess king, jack of diamonds. I continue for $250. The bet is announced, and as I'm getting the last $100 into the middle, my opponent folds. So... Second barrel gets it done. Aggression is paying off in this day. Following that, we pick this hand up on the flop because early position raised to $15, hijack calls. I'm in the cutoff with 7-8 of diamonds. I make the call for 15 as well. And we flop the absolute joint 10-9-6 rainbow. No diamond out there, but we'll take this flop any day, always. The preflop aggressor continues for $20, and considering there aren't any flush draws out there, I'm not too worried about too many turn cards. So having the nuts, I decide to just make the call. This brings the early position player along, so we end up going three ways to a turn card, which is the three of clubs. Brings back to our clubs, and now the preflop aggressor continues for 70. Well, we've been pretty aggressive so far when we have not had it. It's time to be aggressive when we do. Maybe these players will just be sick of it and decide to make a stand and call down, maybe even raise. Either way, it's time to raise it up. I make it $225. And now the early position player goes in the tank for a long time, really thinking about his options, going over things, things for almost 45 seconds before eventually saying it's a huge fold and letting it go. Hate to hear that. And then the flop and turn aggressor pretty much snap folds right after him. So no value to be had or additional value, let's say, but, but we definitely want to raise here. Charge the club draws, charge the queen jacks 
just did not get any calls this time. But hey, we take another pot. It's good. Well, we've been super aggressive. This has all been about 10 minutes of sitting down. This has been bang, bang, bang. I am throwing them out there. And now I'm under the gun with ace, king, offsuit. I raised to $20. It folds all the way to the small blind, who three bets to 125, and now is gonna be four bet territory. We get to play the hand in position. We have removal to aces and kings. This player already said he's willing to make a huge fold against me, so maybe he'll make another one with like jacks or queens. Maybe even kings. Either way, this is a four bet. I raised to $350. If you want it, you got it, sister! My opponent actually looks in absolute agony over this. Like, genuinely, not like fake, uh, all in kind of agony. Everyone knows what that's like. He counts it out, he looks at his cards, counts it out again, eventually sticks it in there. Not quite what we want to see, but we still have ace, king, and position going heads up to a flop, which comes queen, 10, 8, rainbow. Not a particularly good board. Joy. My opponent has ace, queen a lot of the time, which is horrible for me. He's got king, queen, he's got pocket jacks, which have a gut shot, which may not fold to a bet. So when it checks to me, Unlike the last stream game with Chris Moneymaker, I would like to realize some equity here. A jack right now gives me the nuts, so we're happy to just check this back, maybe turn an ace, maybe turn a king, something easy. Well, the turn is the queen of spades. Somewhat reducing the possibility of my opponent having ace-queen, but if he did, I expect him to bet here a decent percentage of the time. But he checks it to me a second time. Alright, well, maybe he has ace-jack and I'm actually ahead? Maybe I have eight outs against pocket jacks. We're gonna see that when we decide to check this one back a second time. And we bink a straight on the river, jack of clubs, we have Broadway. But now my opponent leads for $200. I don't think there's any option here besides call. Sometimes he's gonna have pocket jacks, sometimes he's gonna have slow played ace queen. Maybe he has pocket nines that got there on the river. That would be a fantastic result. Either way, I think calling is the only option, so that's what I do. And my opponent announces high hand. Well, that's never what you want to hear. He has pocket queens. So. <laughs> just run a straight into quads. And unfortunately for us, my opponent rivers one of the very few cards out there that will get him paid. But either way, nice hand. He gets a high hand. I get a $50 table share, which is nice. You know, lose 200 on the bet, win 50 back. Ah, well. Following that, it is my turn to pick up pocket queens. The opponent from the last hand raises to $20 from late position. I'm in the small blind with queens. Worked well for him, so we're three betting this one up to $60. My opponent makes the call pretty quickly, and the flop comes queen nine eight with two hearts. Well, we flopped a set. Maybe it's our turn to turn quads. That seems fair, right? Either way, having a ton of this board locked up, I decided to start with a check often do this with top set. Yes, there's plenty of flush draws and like ace jack to try to protect against, but I think my opponent will bet a lot of those hands himself and I can go for a check raise. So I check the pocket queens. He checks it back pretty quickly and we get a pretty bad turn card with the six of hearts. Three hearts on board now. Now we're going to go for some value. If he has a single ace or king of hearts, we want to get value from that. So I bet $80, but my opponent probably didn't have a whole lot as he pretty quickly folds. Still win a pot though. After that, with two limps, I'm going to cut off with 10 jack of spades. I raised to $20. You can also can go bigger, like 30, 40, but there had been a decent amount of three bets at this table. We want a size to the point where we can call a three bet with this exact hand. So 20 seems to be the magic number. On this hand, the big blind and both the limpers decide to call. So we end up going four ways to a flop of jack, eight, three with two diamonds. Top pair is good. Top pair is better than average flops, but the big blind might think so too as he leads for $50. Folds back to me. Think raising is an overplay. This opponent had actually led with some small and medium pairs a few times previously in the session. So Jack could be good a lot of the time. My opponent could be drawing pretty thin, but the times I raise and get called, he's likely going to fold all those pairs, but call if he flops a set. So I think call is the only option here. When the turn is the queen of clubs, is an over card, gives me a gut shot, that seems relevant, but now my opponent checks to me. As mentioned, he's led with some weak pairs, so we're going to go for some value and protection here. He could have led with a diamond draw as well, maybe jack 9, 8, 10, plenty of hands that we can get paid by here. So I bet $115. My 
My opponent does not think too long before putting in the call and then checks pretty quickly when the three of spades hit the river. Well, I think this pot is big enough for a second pair type holding to happily check it down. So that's what I do, take my shot on value. My opponent announces that he missed, so guessing it was missed diamonds, unlikely to call a river bet anyway, and Jack-10 gets a ton of value on this hand. Following that, the cutoff raise to 25. I did not see the button call the 25 before I three bet to 80 with ace-king off suit. Would have been higher if I saw the button caller, but doesn't matter, both players fold. We take down another one, three betting ace-king pre. Next hand of note. And this one is probably the hand of the vlog for me. There's a $10 button straddle. It folds away to me in middle position. I raised to $30 with king queen of clubs. Very pretty, pretty hand. Plenty of potential with it. But the cutoff decides that 30 is not enough. He makes it 110. This opponent had previously three bet with 10-3 off suit in the session and ended up rivering a wheel. So that's going through my mind. Can't really fold to this gentleman. Could 4-bet, but I think that's a bluff in this point, so we'd much prefer our opponent to just have the ability to bluff off with his raggedy 3-bet bluffs. When we make the call, we flop top pair on the King-Jack-Deuce board with one club, so top pair seems good. Again, it's kind of reversed implied odds. Sometimes you're against Ace-King here and you really can't get away from it. Sometimes your opponent has King-Jack and was going for a somewhat light 3-bet. But with backdoor straight, back to work flush possibilities. When my opponent continues for $80, I think it's a pretty easy call. And we turn some equity. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Can't really fold to any bet now. I check to my opponent, hoping he slows down, hoping he has a hand like ace queen, ace 10, ace jack that would just try to realize a little bit, but he does not. He continues putting the foot on the gas with $150. Again, he bet all three streets with just a gut shot when he three bet light last time. So he could have a queen 10, ace queen hand. We could be good. Could need to hit a hit a club. Either way, can't fold to this gentleman on his continuation. We called the $150. And bink, three of clubs on the river. Lassie must be missing. We have an extremely strong hand. We actually block pocket kings, which is kind of relevant. And we are not going to let this check through. I have led bluffed in the past with spots that I think my opponent is capped at one pair. In this spot, I really just hope he has ace-king and can't get away from it, but a hand like ace-king, ace-jack, any of those are probably going to check back river and realize their showdown value. So we're not going to let that happen. I lead out for $300. This puts my opponent in the blender. Happy to see it means I'm likely not getting raised because Pocket jacks is still technically possible for my opponent, but the longer he thinks and he counts out just the call, the more I think he's pretty much impossible to raise. Hoping to see a call here. He eventually sticks it in there. I announce flush. My opponent is disgusted as he shows pocket aces with the ace of clubs. So as a serious relevant blocker, but no dice on this one. Biggest hand of the night for me. Not sure if my opponent goes for value with aces on the on that particular river, possibly with the club blocker, but I'd say we got pretty close to the max here. We win another small one before. With three limps, I'm in the big blind with pocket queens. Gonna raise this one up. I make it $35. Size up a little bit. I'm out of position. I don't want to, this to go massively multi-way. Heads up will be preferred, and that's what we get when one of the limpers calls and everyone else folds. Flop's pretty good, 7-5 deuce, 2 diamonds, I don't have any diamonds, and usually when you play queens, it's like an ace-king high board. So this is going to be just a standard c-bet spot, over half pot, get value from diamond draws, any pocket pair higher than 7s. I bet $50, my opponent snap folds. He had been showing his hand a lot during the day, so thought I'd pay it forward, show him once that he made a good fold. Next hand of note. I'm in early position with ace queen of hearts. I raise to $35 over the $10 button straddle. Folds all the way to the straddler. He's the only caller, so we're heads up to a flop of ace jack 10 with two clubs. Not necessarily my favorite board. Last time I bet top pair on a board with three Broadway cards on it, I got raised and really didn't know what to do. After studying this spot, I think the solver likes a check here a lot more often because you have a ton of equity, but if you get check raised, you're kind of in a really tough, dicey spot. So I start this handoff with a check. My opponent will not check. He'll make it $55. 
Closer to 75% pot, big bet on this board, but we did not check top pair and a gut shot to just fold, so I end up making the call. Turn is an action card. Five of clubs brings three clubs out there. Kind of worried about it until my opponent checks his hand. This is an opponent who I really think is doing an honest club check, I, meaning he definitely doesn't have a suited flush already. Seeing if he has one of them, I think that's a pretty reliable tell. So I'm definitely going to call down if he bets another spot on the turn, possibly bluff river if a club hits. But when I check, he checks it back. River is a board pairing jack of hearts. And now I think it's time to go for a blocker slash value bet. What I mean by that is I throw out $85. I think my opponent's going to call with all weaker aces. Like if he actually had ace 10, ace 5, any of the other aces that are actually counterfeit, my kicker will definitely be good. He's probably going to raise with any jack. So I get to kind of name my price here. And we really don't want like a random king 10, pocket 9s, 8s. Any of that tickets just check back. We'd like to make them pay to see my hand. So for this $85 bet, my opponent thinks for not too long before putting it in. I just flip over my cards immediately. He looks at his hands and throws them into the muck. So we get a little bit of thin value on this hand. Feel pretty good about how it worked out. Which leads us to the next interesting hand. We arrive on the flop here because early position made it $20, which was me. I have queen nine off suit. Get three callers, end up going four ways. Flop is queen, queen, five, rainbow. So we flop trips, but we have a garbage kicker. Think having so much of the board locked up, this is a check most of the time, so that's what I do. Checks all the way to the cutoff, who bets $75. Never folding trips, not certain they're best, but I've seen this player throw out large bets on paired boards when he just has a pocket pair. So could be ahead, could be calling off against a better queen which in that case, you've done it to yourself. No real reason to play queen nine off suit. When I call the $75, the turn is the three of diamonds, brings two diamonds on board. I check it as I don't have the betting lead. Opponent bets $75 again. Well, I guess I hope he's got eights, nines, tens, something like that, and not a better queen because I'm not folding. When I make the call, the river is the six of diamonds. Now diamonds complete. That's less than ideal. I check it again. My opponent snap checks it back. That should be good news. I should win. I show my cards. My opponent mucks pretty quickly, and we take down another decent-sized pot. And a final hand of note. With one limp, a later position player raised to $30. I have ace-king offsuit again. Always going to three-bet this one. Helps that I'm on the button. I make it $110. Going big with it. And this leads my opponent to fold. Okay, we take another one down. Sounds like a good way to end the day. <laughs> Entrance to the winner's circle. So we are into the game for 1500, out of the game for 1980, which is a profit of $480 across five hours equates to $96 an hour or 19 big blinds an hour. Yeah, get a slight bounce back after my Chris Moneymaker debacle. If you haven't seen that video, highly recommend. Felt like it was going to be a lot of the same, honestly, leading into it. You know, you win some hands playing aggressively, playing well, and then you get somewhat cooler to a straight into a turned quads ended up making some hands towards the end and booking a solid win if you made it to this point thank you i appreciate it stay on the lookout for my live stream later and i will see you on the next one